So for today's video, we're back in World of Warships Legends, the console version of World of Warships, and I'm playing a destroyer. I mentioned it in the last video, but destroyers are nuts in this game. You have incredible power at your fingertips. It is crazy what DDs are able to do in this game. And again, that is down mainly to the crazy concealment that these ships are able to get on the console version. It's around 15 to 20% better than the PC counterparts. So yeah, certain ships become insane. Like a lot of the Japanese uh, torpedo boats become absolutely bonkers. Um, ships like Kamikaze, Shimakaze are just crazy in this game with having 4.6, sub 4.5 kilometer concealments. It's crazy um, with the torpedo power that they get. But that's not to say that other DDs aren't amazing as well. Ships like a Farragut, like I'm playing, have really, really good gun power for their tier. And you're going to see me use them quite effectively here, especially at the beginning. Uh, one thing I really, really do enjoy about this game is the more brawling, uh, action-focused part of this game. It is really cool to see people just full sending it into you. Um, obviously, that won't be around forever. Uh, this is a lot like what PC World of Warships was like back in the day when people didn't really know how to play. Um, you saw more cruisers just full sending it into the middle of the map. Uh, now you see people just uh, kiting at the back of the map, trying to stay alive and do damage as they run away, essentially. Um, so that meta, I'm sure, will be coming to World of Warships Legends. I have no doubt about that as people get better at the game. But keep in mind, this game is only a year and a half, two years old. So the PC game is much farther along than something like that. But this is a very fun experience, all right? If you have a console, if you can get your hands on maybe a cheap old last generation console, I believe they're supporting this game for a little while. Um, or if you manage to get your hands on a new one and you're very lucky to be able to do so, this, uh, this game I think is a great pickup for free. This Farragut is not well upgraded that I have. This is a relatively stock scenario. Um, I think I have the hull and torps upgrade, maybe. I, I'm not exactly sure what I was fully, whether I was fully upgraded or not. But what I do know is my commander was very low level, and it was not the optimal commander for this ship. It was just the standard commander you get when you start playing the game, and well, that puts you at a pretty huge disadvantage. You're lacking concealment. You're lacking DPM. Uh, it's pretty huge the buffs that the commanders are able to give you. They're not just kind of standard buffs like you get on PC commanders. Some of them are pretty incredible. Um, like battleships, for example, I didn't really point it out, but there's a skill called Will to Rebuild. And if a friendly ship is within a certain radius, by default when you get the skill it's 1.5 kilometers, um, you'll slowly get a heal every um, until you heal up to, I think, around 20% HP, it might be a little less than that, 15%. It'll just constantly slowly heal you to a small amount of HP if you're on low health. And it's really, really, really fun to use. And I think skills like that promote a lot of brawling and team play. That's the really cool thing about this game is these legendary tier skills are all focused on promoting team play and getting into closer combat, scenarios where you're risking your ship a little more to get these skills activated. And I think that's super cool. I've had a few games in my battleships where I've requested support from a teammate and someone will come by and just activate my will to rebuild for a little bit, heal me up, and then they'll go on their way in a destroyer or something else like that. It's really, really, really cool. So when I'm in a destroyer or a cruiser, I've done this a couple times, a battleship will be on low HP on my team, I'll just go over to him and just sit there next to him as he's constantly repairing. It's so cool. Being able to help your teammates like that is so awesome. And uh, I wish skills like that would be translated into the PC game. There's a lot of really good things here on the console, console version that the PC game can really learn from. I think promoting team play is really cool. I think promoting brawling is really cool. Obviously, the meta has massively shifted in the PC game to very campy playstyle, and I think that will definitely come here as well. 
there's no getting around that, but that's okay. Um, because I think these developers on the console side really are looking for a more action, quote unquote, oriented game. Now, to talk a little bit more about Destroyers and why they're so nuts, um, well, on the PC side, I would argue that they're probably the second strongest class in the game. Aircraft carriers taking the cake there, but Destroyers have massive, massive battle impact, um, which is a metric that Wargaming has used in the past to describe how much a ship contributes to a battle. And destroyers being very stealthy and being able to spot a lot, contest caps, deal big alpha strikes with their torpedoes, DPM with their guns, they're very flexible and they control the engagement. Um, and because of all that, I think they're one of the more most strong classes in the entire game on PC. And when you bring them over to console and you give them a 15 to 20% concealment buff, yeah, they're gonna be even stronger. <laughs> Um, and all that to say, you don't even need that concealment buff to make the DDs look absolutely insane on the console side, because games like this happen, where I don't believe I have much of any concealment buffs on my Farragut here, just because I don't have the right commander. Um, and that is a pain point, obviously, of starting out in this game, is not having the right commanders and having the game be somewhat balanced around you having a maxed out um, specific commander for each ship. So when you're new and just starting out in the game, it is a little bit rough uh, not having those ultimate commanders or the right specific commander for your ship when you're fighting against people that do have that commander fully leveled up. You're going to be lacking a lot in concealment, you're going to be lacking a lot in damage output, you'll lack in health, um, it's rough, but with a destroyer, you control a lot of the engagements. So if you are a lower health or lower level destroyer commander, um, you can still choose to play a little bit more passive, play more around your teammates, trying to cut, create scenarios where you're in massive advantages. And the maps, of course, contribute a lot to that. And maps like this one, I believe this one's called Big Race, it's in uh, the PC game as well. They're just a destroyer's playground. The amount of islands that you're able to just use to <laughs> essentially torture battleships as they push is uh, is pretty hilarious. And you've seen me do that this game. We've already landed eight torpedoes, even though our concealment range is far greater than our torpedo range. Using islands intelligently um, can make these destroyers, even with the lower level commander, um, be pretty amazing. So if you're a PC player who likes to play Destroyer, and you're kind of tired of the way aircraft carriers are able to essentially zone you out of the, <laughs> the game for extended periods of time, I think this console game uh, could be a great spot for you to come play. The aircraft carriers are nowhere near as oppressive to Destroyers as they are on PC. It's just nowhere near as bad. They, get ro uh, they don't get rocket planes, they only get dive bombers and torpedo bombers so you don't have to deal with those rockets coming in and just kind of one-shotting you um, you still have to do some work to dodge the dive bombers but they're definitely harder to hit and i've noticed that if i'm dodging and i'm at full speed and turning and maneuvering i am definitely able to make it difficult for the cv to hit me i haven't really been hit that hard by an aircraft carrier yet in my destroyers and i've played a reasonable number of games um I'm nearly finished with the uh, Mehan in this grind, and I'll get the Benson soon. And I've played quite a few uh, Kamikaze games just because that ship is so nuts. <laughs> um, I'm not featuring that one for this video just because it's uh, it's a little bit too good. And I think um, it'd be pretty easy to write off a video that says destroyers are too strong by playing one of the strongest destroyers. Um, but by playing a relatively stock Farragut, I think it is, illustrates my point just a little bit better. Now on to the end of this game, um, we've done a massive amount of damage for <laughs> our 11,200 HP that we get, and this Julio is going to cap out our cap if we don't do something. So we just need to reset him. And this is the great power of a destroyer, you control the engagement entirely. We just need to get him out of our cap, 
and then smoke up so he can't get a shot into us. Unfortunately, he does, and I think he'll reset us here. But the main thing is, we just need to be farther ahead on the, the cap tick. And we are. And that's it. That's game. He's lost. That easy. <laughs> um, he has two choices. He can sit in the cap and wait for me to tick him out on points. Or he could come try and kill me. And if that's the case, he'll be out of our spawn cap. And our cap will be ticking up points. You notice we're around uh, 30 points behind the enemy team. So once we tick up above uh, 355 points, I'll just be able to leave the cap and win the game. Um, either way, I think it's a pretty easy win at this point. And I'm not saying battleships should be able to win in this scenario. Obviously, there should be counters to ships. Um, and in this game, it feels like battleships counter cruisers a little bit more at the lower, uh, at the lower tiers. Uh, but once you start getting into the higher tiers, when cruisers get heals, it does feel a lot like high tier PC games, where uh, the battleships don't do a great job of countering cruisers anymore. <laughs> um, especially because they love to take overpens. Just like in the PC side, if you catch your cruiser flat broadside, odds are you're going to overpen it. So um, it's a little bit frustrating. But in these mid tiers, battleships can be pretty scary for the cruisers. And. Maybe that's where more of the fun of the console game is, and maybe the PC game as well, is in these mid-tiers. Something else um, before this video ends that I want to talk about is the matchmaker. I think the matchmaker in the console game really helps to make the game fun, and that's because it's plus one, minus one. Yes, the tiers are squished, and yes, going from tier four to five, five to six, six to seven, the jump is higher than going from the equivalent tiers on PC, but I do think it adds a lot more to the fun when you're not facing a ship that is two tiers higher than you. Um, even though the tier jumps are more like 1.5 in power level, I would say, maybe a little less than that, but not having to face two tiers higher than you is a lot of fun. Facing nine versus nine on generally smaller maps, um, the maps that are shared in these mid tiers are generally, uh, you're generally playing on lower tier maps uh, from the PC game. And if you are playing on a higher tier map, I think Atlantic is a good one or a good example. They've just basically squished the map down, made a lot of the big open areas a lot smaller. And that I think adds to more fun games. It's, uh, it's a good time. I'm really enjoying my time on uh, Legends here. And I think if you're kind of tired of the PC meta, tired of the way uh, Wargaming keeps adding things to the PC game that don't really belong, like submarines and carriers and hybrid ships and airdrops from Dutch cruisers, maybe coming over and checking out the console game would be a good option. I certainly am enjoying my time here. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.